Today, I am so excited to be able to share with you five new Easter Dollar Tree DIYs. I absolutely love Easter and I love to decorate for it, create crafts for it, and I can't wait to share these with you. Not only am I gonna be sharing with you some new DIYs, but today's video is actually in collaboration with Sarah Jane from Chick on the Cheap, and I could not be more excited. I absolutely adore her. I just think the world of her. I love her DIYs. I love her hauls when she shares with us like her different like Walmart fashion, because not only do we craft, but we all have to wear clothes. If you haven't discovered her already, you need to go check out her channel and especially her neutral colored Easter themed Dollar Tree DIYs that she has created for you. If you're coming over from Sarah Jane's channel, thank you so much. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Common Crazy. I hope that you love today's projects and that you will hit that subscribe button. You can also find me on Instagram. It is a little bit of Common Crazy over there, just like it is here. And let's go ahead and jump on into today's projects. So here you see all the supplies that you will need for project number one. I will have a complete list of all the supplies that I am using for this project as well as all the other projects listed for you in the description box below. I'm using the little wooden bunnies. They come five in a pack. I will be using all five and I'll get more into that as I go along. I'm also using the little metal words. They have spring, bunny, and welcome in this package. I'm also using the wood craft cubes, some ribbon, as well as some paint and a scrap piece of wood. To start off with, I am using Waverly's Chalk Paint in Elephant. You can pick it up at Walmart. I am painting the base or the scrap piece of wood. Now, what's great about this is you can choose any color that you want to that goes with your scheme of colors. You don't have to choose my colors. Now, my scrap piece of wood is 17 inches long, and the reason why I am going with a 17 inches is because I will be using all five of my rabbits. You could actually do it probably with 16 inches as well, give or take. It depends on how much you want to overlap your bunnies. Now, I'm going in with five of the bunnies, and that's because my family is there are five of us, and so I'm representing my family in bunnies, and that's what I chose to do. So if you wanted to represent your family and there were three of you or four of you or seven of you, you could absolutely do something like this. So this could be such a very personal way of doing it, and you'll see that I personalize it even more as I go along into this project. So I'm going in with a white acrylic paint in order to give my bunnies a coat I am going to be painting the front and the back, but once I got into this, I realized I can't leave the hole on their ear. That's not going to look very good in the finished product. So I did go in with my wood filler. I filled it in. Once that dried, I did sand it down so it would be nice and flat. And then I went back in with a white acrylic paint again, and I did paint both the front and the back of the bunnies. Once that completely dried, then I could go in and I use some wood glue in order to attach the little wood cubes to the back. Once that wood glue set up and dried, I could then go in with the white acrylic paint onto the wood, wood cube and paint those. Now, I did not paint those before because they're small pieces and they're hard to hold and I did not want to try to paint those. I just knew they would be so much easier to paint if I had something else to hold onto. And so I chose to do it this way. After the paint had completely dried, now it was time for me to go ahead and place my bunnies onto my scrap wood. And I went ahead and I staggered my bunnies. So I put three in the front and two in the back. And that's just the way I chose to do it again. This is such a personal thing, just have fun with it. Once I had that on there, I went in with some wood glue so that that could secure those down. You could hot glue them on. I just prefer to use wood glue with wood. When that was dry, I did decide to embellish them and I put little black ribbon bow ties for the boys and that little gingham little hair bows for the girls. So we have three boys in the family and two girls in my family. And so that is how I personalize them. Now, once I had that on there, I did go ahead and attach the welcome sign. I used some of the super glue gel that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And once I did that, this was completely done. And I think this is absolutely adorable. I love how you can customize, the, customize this so that it can fit your family. I think it is so cute. Next project, I am going to be using another one of those wooden bunnies, so grab one before you use it for that first project. Some black felt as well as one of those gray and white buffalo check baby blankets that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. 
start off with, I'm just taking my baby blanket and I'm folding it in half in order to line it up the way that I want it. I'm just using the grid or the buffalo check and the lining those up to and matching those up. Now to cut it, I am going in with a straight edge ruler that is used for like quilting and then my rotary cutter. If you've been around, then you know this is my absolute favorite rotary cutter. I love the handle on this. I can't seem to use a rotary cutter that has like a straight handle. I love that this has just that little bit of a curve. So to get the blanket ready, I'm actually trimming all four sides so that I have nice, clean, straight edges. I'm creating a rectangle so that I can make a bolster pillow and I just want nice clean edges. It's I'm not measuring it or anything. I just want to make sure that I have straight edges on all four sides that my opposing opposite sides are equal with one another. Other than that, that is all you need. And once that is done and I have two pieces that are identical, they are ready to for me to start putting the pillow together. So I've decided that I'm actually going to hot glue it using a fabric glue, but you can of course use your sewing machine. So for this, I'm exactly like if you were going to sew it, you're going to take your two top ed top pieces and you're going to face them towards each other and then you're just going to take your hot glue around the edges and because it is hot glue you're going to do a section and then fold it over do a section and fold it over but it moves super quickly once you get to the bottom side of it i went ahead and i left a section open a little bit larger than my hand where then i didn't close it off because i want to make sure that i of course can still stuff it with the batting and we will fix that in just a little bit after I had the hot glue set up, I went ahead and I turned the pillow out by stuffing my hands in and making sure I poked out those corners. Now it's time for me to go ahead and create my bunny. So I took my little wooden bunny and I traced it with just like a little chalk marker. And then I did that three times and cut out the bunny. And I went in with that exact same fabric hot glue and I glued down my bunnies. And then I decided to go ahead and give him a little pom-pom tails. I think that makes it so cute. Now I had an old pillow lying around that I could use the batting in order to stuff it, but you could stuff it with whatever you want. Once your pillow is all stuffed, then you just go in and fold under your edges and finish it off with hot glue, or if you would like to go ahead and sew it, this would be the time. I think this pillow is absolutely darling and I adore it. So this next project is so simple, yet it is so cute. So I already have this box but there are a couple of Dollar Tree options, of course, that you can absolutely use. So this mom's bathroom wash, brush, and floss, it is the exact same size as the box. It just doesn't have the backing that the box has, but it is the same size. Now, the eight by 10 canvas is a little bit longer than the box, but it is the same width. So you do have a couple options or you may already have something that line around your house. Here I am also using another one of those little wooden bunnies and a page from this book. This book I picked up at Dollar Tree and I like to use it for various crafts. I have some Mod Podge, some paint, and a couple of paint brushes as well as the metal word bunny. To start off with, I am just taking some Mod Podge onto the bunny. I like to add a thin coat onto that and then I'm just placing the paper or the page from the book on there and smoothing that out. Now, I don't like to trim this up before. I actually like to trim it up after it, the Mod Podge is set and dried and I do that with some sandpaper and you'll see that. And then I go ahead and with, this is blue, this blue is from Waverly, it's called Agave. It's a beautiful blue and that is what I'm painting the word bunny with and I actually end up giving it two coats. So once the Mod Podge has completely dried, now I go in with a 60 grit sandpaper and I am sanding away from the edges of the paper down and this is how I get the paper off. This is how you get a beautiful trend. It makes it look like the paper was designed to be on this bunny or whatever it is that you are doing. It gives it the most perfect cut, better than if you were to like trace out the bunny and cut it. I absolutely love doing it this way. Now that everything is ready, now it is time to attach my bunny and my bunny. So to attach the wood bunny, I am going in with hot glue to do that, but to attach the metal bunny, I am going in with super glue. Sometimes hot glue and metal don't seem to mesh up as well, and so the super glue will do a better job of making sure that it stays down. We only need the tiniest amount. 
Well, I am making sure that you are getting a lot of mileage out of this little bunny, but I absolutely love this sign. I think it is so cute. It's really simple to do. I love the little pop of blue. It's one of my favorite colors for spring and Easter, and I hope that you love this sign as well. So for this project, I'm creating a garland. I absolutely love decorating with garlands. And so I went ahead and I grabbed some of the carrot ornaments. I also grabbed some Buffalo check paper. I get that at Hobby Lobby. It's always four for a dollar. Mod Podge. I have some paint. I have some chalk paint here, but you could also use some acrylic paint. I have the white twine that you get in the automotive section. I also have some orange, but you will see that I changed that when I have a little hiccup later on. To start off with, I just grabbed the Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm painting all the tops of the carrots in the black paint. Now, I'm just making sure that I cover the entire top of the carrot and I don't need to paint any further than that because I will be using the paper for the bottom half of the carrot. So I went ahead and I just trimmed out my paper quickly to give me enough for each of my carrots. Now I am choosing here to go ahead and do 10 carrots. There are five in each pack. I am covering a garland that will go on, on my mantle and it's rather large. If you are gonna do a garland on a small area, you would not need that. Or if you wanted to go on a larger area, of course you could do that as well. I was able to cover all 10 carrots with one piece of paper. So once all my paper was trimmed out, now I could apply it to the bottom half of my carrot. So I just took my, a thin coat of Mod Podge and brushed that onto the bottom of each one of my carrots. And I just went one at a time. So I would apply a thin coat of Mod Podge, lay my paper on, and then I would smooth it out. And then I would move on and I would do that to the next carrot. Once all of my carrots were completely dried, then I went in with my 60 grit sandpaper and I sanded again away from the paper, down away from the carrot to get the paper off. It really does make the most beautiful, seamless, I don't even know if I can explain it. You have to kind of check it out for yourself because it gives you that perfect edge better than if you were to trace it and glue it on. Trust me, if you haven't tried this technique, I hope that you will give it a try. You'll absolutely love the results. So here is where I hit my little hiccup. So I went in with the orange twine and went up to apply it and I only had enough to do five with just this one spool of twine and I did not have a second spool and I went to the store, they didn't have it, that was fine but I did have some orange raffia. Thanks to my friend Francis for reminding me to try the orange raffia and guess what? I like it better. I think it looks so much better. It matches my other decor better. I am so glad that this was a happy hiccup. In order to hang the garland, all you're gonna do is take some twine, thread it through the hole that's already on the carrots and tie a knot, and then you're gonna thread those through a larger piece and then hang it wherever you like to display your garland. Here I have it on my mantle and I've combined it with the cute little bunny garland that I created last year and I love these two together. If you missed the video where I shared this bunny garland, I just did a video of my top 10 favorite DIYs from last year. I will link that video again for you at the end of this video so that you can check it out. For this last project, I have a can of spray paint. I have one of those little craft bunnies, E6000 and a mesh wire basket. To start off with, I'm just taking a pair of pliers and pulling that tiny little metal part out of the bunny's head. You just have to pull straight out. It comes out super easy. I then took a 220 grit sandpaper, so just a really fine sandpaper, and I sanded any of the rough spots just to make sure that my money was nice and smooth. This is really meant more for a kid craft, and so some of the areas might be a little bit rougher, and I wanted him to just look a little nicer. So I went in with my E6000 on the bottom of the bunny, but then I also went in with some hot glue. I flipped over the basket and I really went in underneath it so that the hot glue would also really help secure this while the E6000 was sitting up. And that's because the basket has a little bit more flexibility and give that it's not a hard surface. And I wanted to make sure that the bunny would adhere to the basket and have a really good hold. Once the glue set up, I went ahead and I gave it a good coat of spray paint. I wanted the whites to match, and that is why I went ahead and spray painted it. Of course, you could do it in a color of your choice, but that is all you needed to do this. I love this. It's a super easy cloche 
I'm sure someone will correct me if I said that wrong. Now all I did was take a decorative plate that I had. Actually, I got this at a thrift store, but it is a Pioneer Woman plate that it is sitting on top of. You can get that at Walmart or you could grab one from Dollar Tree. I think it is so cute. Threw in a couple of Easter things underneath it. I absolutely love this and it was so easy to do. If you have a favorite today, let me know that in the comments below. I am so grateful for Sarah Jane for collabing with me on today's video. If for some reason you haven't already seen her video, make sure you hop on over. I do have her channel and her video linked in the description box below for you. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.